Hi guys, this is a demonstration for the 3D part of your sculpture, your painted sculpture, we call it also, I think, Picasso sculpture. And here's what you need to begin with uh, in, the, in the sequence of what, when you need them. So you actually need two uh, hangers, and they can be uh, either a wire coat hanger, this has a bit of a plastic on it, or aluminum, or something like more like steel here. So any of these will work, but you'll need two of them. And then to, to bend and cut those, you need to have a pair of pliers. You could also have a pair of needle nose pliers. So both of them work. I've tried this and it does work. And the ones you've made your faces, you're going to have put them into a plastic container. Um, it can be really, it's around this size, about six to eight inches tall, like the size of a hand maybe. And uh, no peanut butter, plastic jar, uh, could be the old um, dahi container, any, either way. And then in order, but to keep, make sure that that wire really can stay tight and uh, standing within your plastic, you, I, you need some rocks. And I'm suggesting a, uh, you need several sizes to begin with kind of a little bit of a larger size. These are, you know, two or three inches uh, big, a bunch of these kind of slightly bigger ones, and then a bunch of smaller ones. These are maybe about an inch long. And if you can, if you have some sand or even some smaller kind of gravel like uh, some of that too this isn't totally necessary but I'll just grab some because I I think it might be helpful although not told not necessary as I said and then once you've made your, all of that you're going to cover it with uh, with uh, nylon stocking right so this is actually I've cut this already from the, the the kind of the pant stocking the double legs I cut off you know the bottom half of one of these um, you can probably even use the other parts but Start with the bottom half, with the sock part, the foot part, because that's going to be the thing that you slide over your wire sculpture. It can be, you know, it'll be any color, whatever color you get, doesn't matter, because we'll be covering it at, in the end with gesso. Um, this here actually is something called texture white, uh, because that, the texture white is a, a kind of a thick a white uh, paint. This also works, not as well as gesso, so that's why I suggest you guys do use gesso, but. This is, I'll be using this just for the sake of the demonstration. Of course, you need some uh, a brush to brush it on. Uh, I've got a bigger one here. You may not have access to something like this, but this will work just as well. Okay, so to begin with, um, let's start with the wire, uh, the or rather the, the um, coat hanger. And the thing about the coat hanger, let me just point out for, for example, this here, you might, um, is that there is a part that, if you look closely, the, the top part here is ask yourself which part does it actually is it a continuation of so this wire here goes straight through and up here this wire here is attached to that wire at this point so I don't I'm not going to cut the one the the, the 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 part that is a continuation here I'm going to cut the one that is got attached and because then I can still use this otherwise if I cut it here um, this part then will break really quickly and I want to use make use of this part here some Coat hangers, they'll just be, you'll see this, kind of just wrapped around. You just have to take the, the pliers and unwrap it. But in this case, I'm going to have to cut it. Right? So um, your pliers has a little section here, which has a kind of a cutting part. It's the part closest to the handles. right? So I get the wire. Um, again, I'm not going to cut the part that is the, that connects with the, the, the hook here. I'm going to cut the other part and get it in there. And you might have to try this a couple of times. Um, but uh, it's you put a bit of effort, but eventually there you get it, and it's cut. It's uh, cut through that. And now, when I what I showed in class was like really sort of manic and fast, and I didn't wasn't a very good demonstration. I'm going to do a little bit slower here. What you want to do is you want to start uh, just un unbend these and just do it carefully because you don't want too many corners in your in your in your um, your wire here. Uh, before you start to sculpt it, right? But I'm going to get it kind of. Maybe, what I'm trying, what I'm trying to do here is, I want to get it an equal amount of. Um, this, of course, I'm going to now take my pliers and straighten out the hook here, and I, I want to get these two ends to be sort of. Well, you can see them um, equally, and your two ends here are the parts that are going to go into your into the uh, the plastic jar, plastic container. So I want about I want to get kind of this shape so that I can start planning out the the head, the face. Okay, so these two parts are going to go into 
the jar like that, right? That's going to be my the end goal. Okay, so let us begin here. Um, so I want about you know maybe it's five six inches, about this much, so that that go, so that there's something that can go into the jar to hold it tight, so it doesn't move around. And think about this. Think about the jar as the neck, right? So the neck, and then up what comes out of the jar will be the actual head, right? And you can like we said, you can either do it as a profile. So the outline of the profile or the outline of a head straight on. And what I would suggest is uh, I'd, I'd encourage you to do the outline, the, rather the profile, because you're doing your faces straight on. So if you've got the wire part that is the profile, it's going to really create some interesting uh, um, kind of rearranging of the face. It'll be much more fun to, to get that, that front thing onto something that's actually, it's more going to be more Cubist, more Picasso. So... Uh, but if you don't want to do that, you're free to do it any way you want. Okay, so I'm going to work with a profile with my uh, wire here. Now I have to, I have to, um, I'm actually, the, the, the hook part, the, 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 at that point, is actually kind of a nice place to begin the beginning of my jaw here. Right, and here's the thing, you're, it's going to be a bit of a um, kind of a hit and miss, uh, you, the goal is to try to bend your head all the way until you come to the end here and you have enough, about the same amount, sticking out the back end um, so that they both can fit nicely there. What I mean is that as you go, you might end up with too much that you've used for the face and not enough that you're for the back of the head. It doesn't matter. Do the best way you can. But what I want to recommend is kind of start with both. So... I've started here with what would be my the jaw sticking out. And at the same time, I'm going to start kind of with the other end. And this isn't the e easiest way to do it, but I'm going to hold on to both of these so that, see that they're both at the same length, because that's the part that's going into my container. And I'm going to start bending this out as if it's the back of the head. Remember the, the and ideally, get take, a, take your computer, um, Google uh, the profile of a head, or it might be in one of those, um, you can use one of the images that are that we've used in class, and just to get a sense of what the shape of the head is, of, it, the, the, um, uh, of the, the shape of the head, the, the, the head in profile. So the back of the head sticks out like this. It's this egg, remember the egg, and then the front of the, the face is kind of the square, this rectangle that's kind of added to the front of this egg. So either way, Here's the, the back of my head, and I'm going to kind of go over like this. And this is sort of, like I said, sort of a hit and miss. Um, but now I'm getting the sense of, okay, I have this much here now for the face. And I'm going to start, I'm going to maybe give myself that much of a jaw. And, uh, and then let me start working up the, let me give, start here with the chin. Okay, the, the chin is like this this is where your pliers comes in really really handy and then you can just you can, you're deciding are you going to give it an open mouth or a closed mouth and i am kind of i kind of want to play with an open mouth now remember with an, if you're op having a profile with an open mouth you're going to be using more of your wire here you don't so you have to be careful that you're you're not going to run out of wire um, but um, remember the the front of the there's the there's kind of a s angle from the tip of the nose to the chin, right? It's almost like a line straight down, and so I'm going to keep that in mind. So the upper, again, it doesn't have to be exact because this is sort of, I mean, if it's um, you're kind of wanting to keep in mind the things that you learned about the 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 what am I saying about the the proportions of the face, you want, to, you want to keep those in mind just to get some sense of realism. But if they're... Um, uh, but if it if it's gets distorted in some way, that's totally okay as well. Right? So if you end up with sort of a strange-looking face, that's, that's okay. If that's, especially if that kind of fits with your, your idea, with your... your so here I'm getting something of a face here. Um, I, I should be looking at the reference to know exactly what, you know, which I'm doing this sort of from memory. So it's, 
maybe not the best uh, demonstration. I should be ref referring to uh, an actual image of, of, a, of a head in profile, but um, here I've got, so I've got work my, on my nose, and the nose comes up, and then if I, I know that there's this little dip here at, at the brow, the, the, it, um, uh, the, the profile dips in uh, from the top of the nose, the bridge of the nose, to the brow. So I want, I'm going to angle this part out just a bit, and to get my brow, and then this is going to be the, the top of my head. Now let's see what. How, whoa, how, oh my, see, I made, this is the typical drawing mistake where you make, see that where the line of the eyes are? They're like three quarters from the bottom, from the bottom to the top, you see this? So those eyes should have been like halfway, this part here should have been like, like there, but that's okay. Um, I could redo it, I could start, set up, you know, do it, pick up another coat hanger and try again, in fact, I, I probably would, but, or let me do one, let me just see if I can manipulate the bottom part here, maybe make my, my, uh, oh, because the mouth is open, that means that the chin is actually pointing downwards, I just realized, so I can actually bend, bend that down, that'll help me a little bit, so I'm kind of, what I'm doing here is I'm keeping in mind that the eye, I wanted the eyes to be in the middle here, it won't totally work, but I'm doing a little bit of manipulating here to get see if I can get a little bit closer to the right proportions. Uh, let me bring my I'm going to actually rearrange the nose a bit. I'm going to reshape the nose so that I'm so that's the, th the nice thing about wire is that you you've, you've got a you can actually keep working it. Now I've got sort of a bigger nose sticking out, which is sort of fun. And um, I can, so I'm not gonna, sorry, I'm not gonna spend too much time on this. I think the main thing is just to show that you can actually, you can do some adjustments on your face. And in the end, if the proportions aren't totally correct, that is okay. Is all right. So there's some, that's all right. That's not too bad, right? A sort of a laughing profile. I kind of like that. Uh, somehow he, I, he ended up sort of almost smiling. In fact, I could even make him smile. Let's make him smile. Uh, there. That's a really, it's, yeah, it's kind of there, right? So you can, you can do a lot, you can get emotion out of just a simple profile like this. Okay, anyway, in, in, in order to not, oh, I, I know, the other thing I can do is I've got a little bit of kind of extra length here, so I'm going to use that also to try and get more of a, kind of give, use more of this end part here, this, to allow for more of a skull, because I kind of want that to look a little bit more realistic. Okay, it's not, again, it's not the, the best, but it's good enough. All right, so here is the, the first of my two, and you, 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 can, you can redo these. You can do these as many times, because coat hangers are just super cheap, and there's lots of them available. And here's, of course, what I want to do with it. Okay? So I'm, I'm going to be placing it inside this um, canister here. And I'm going to, of course, have two of them. So this is one that I had made earlier, which is, as you can tell, super simple, right? And I, this is totally made in like 30 seconds just for a demonstration. So I would spend more time on this, get more of, I could make it like a happy one there and then kind of really sad one, with a, like kind of like this with a shut mouth. I'd want to give them a little bit more of a, a sense of lips here and correct the, the brow here, etc. But here's what we're going to be doing, right? We're going to have one. And then we're going to intersect it with the other, right? So I can, you can do this many different ways. You can actually have them like sort of close to each other, right? Like this, or you could have them you know, opposite each other, kind of like that, or you could have them kind of at right angles. So you kind of go like this, and as you turn it, it turns into 
with the other profile and close it to the other. So there, there's this, do you see that right angle? You know, or you can, you can have them kind of like, you can do anything. You can have them actually like leaning away from each other. For this kind of thing, you would need a nylon that's really, there's some stocking, nylon stocking that's really stretchable. And then some that's not so stretchable. The one that I got is not very stretchable. So you want to make you check. And so I probably couldn't achieve this where it's such a, a wide space too, because I'm going to have to cover the whole thing. But um, but I mean, you could even here's you know the thing is you could actually take this and you know this is straight, but you could actually bend it over, like just, like really sort of manipulate things so that. Do you see how this? Do you see that? So it's kind of. It's kind of a shape, like it's got the profile, but I've, I've curved it over, right? So what I'm suggesting, like basically what I'm saying here is get really creative. And the more you can you manipulate these, the more fun it's going to end up looking like. Right? So I'm going to actually go with just sort of a simple, um, I'll try sort of a 90 degree angle to each other. Or oh, the other thing you can do is you can have kind of one above the other like this which cr will create some fascinating uh, shapes, right? So I'm just, here's the thing. Try, be creative with this, okay? Um, and, um, okay, so what, what is gonna happen now is I'm gonna start off by putting some of these larger rocks into my, my, um, my uh, plastic container. And I'm, I'm gonna put some right at the bottom here, kind of just to, Get a nice su surface here. Partly is that I'm I'm going to bring it up until this where the point at which my my um, when I uh, the, the the end of those wire the end of the wires where they reach at, to that roughly to that point I'm going to be putting my first layer of big rocks in and then this is where the smaller set of rocks become super helpful. So I've got those big rocks and I'm going to kind of drop these in in between so that those big rocks don't rattle and roll around. So they, there's a little bit of a sturdiness as a base there. I could even take some sand or some of this gravel and put it in. Um, I'm not going to do that because some of you might not have that. So I'm just going to do the most simplest version. But you could then add that in and then kind of shake it around. That would be the, give you the, the, the most solid first foundation. Okay, next thing is I'm going to place these uh, and I want to intersect them, right? And it's sort of a kind of a clumsy, clumsy thing at first. Um, let's see. I, I'm going to put them like this, okay? And now the thing to do, I'm using one hand to sort of fig, uh, uh, stabilize the the direction I have these or the the positioning of these. And with the other hand, I'm taking these bigger rocks. And I'm starting to kind of drop them in between so that you're starting to build up the rocks around the base of those, your coat hanger wires that, that are in here. Right? So I've got a layer of bigger rocks. Then I go in with my kind of small rocks, do the same thing. Right? So that I'm kind of filling in the spaces between those bigger rocks. If you only do smaller rocks, you'll find that it they'll they'll start to sh these things once they're, it's full up, they'll they they won't be stable enough. They'll end up shifting, and you don't want them to shift, um, especially when you're putting the nylon over. You'll find that they'll if they're not really solidly um, uh, stabilized, they'll end up shifting. So okay, so there's um, there's another layer. Now I'm about up to here, sort of a two thirds up. Uh, the bottom half of my wires is covered. And I'm going to now go again in with the big rocks. And this is maybe the most important part, is I'm, going, I'm actually sort of forcing them in to a place to a, where my I can feel that my things are tight. Right? I want to actually find those places where I can jam these rocks in to make the wires um, feel quite tight. Okay, now I've got already a bunch in and um, big ones in, and if you can, if you want to see, this is what it kind of looks like. And there's these little um, areas in between these gaps that I will now jam with the smaller rocks. And again, your purpose for doing this is you want to end up with your wires being nice and tight, like really solidly uh, 
shoved in there and as moving as little as possible. Now here's the thing. It'll always be a little bit kind of wiggly uh, because it's, this isn't ideal. But once you've painted this, so once you've got the nylon stocking over it and you've, you put a layer of your gesso, and once that gesso dries, you won't have to worry about this anymore. That that's gonna, it's gonna be so solid that it's, it's not going to move, right? But in order to get your stocking on the first time, you're gonna want this as solid as you can get it. In the end, once that gesso makes it nice and solid, this is gonna be mainly your, it's just gonna be your, your, your weightage so that it doesn't tip over easily. So it'll serve two purposes. All right, so I've got kind of this really simple looking fa face and I've got my kind of smiley face and the smiley face is sort of off on the side, which is kind of fun, right? So this is what it's like. And now, and I'm, it's, a, it's a little bit kind of wiggly. And part of that is this, this wire is sort of wiggly. If, uh, I tried it with the aluminum and the aluminum stays super tight because it's actually not very move, bendable. So either way, here we go. Now, at this stage, I'm going to put the um, nylon stocking over it. And as I said, I've already cut it. And this is the toe end, right? So let me take the, this, this part here. You might, might want to stretch it out a little bit if you can. And I'm going to slip it over. And it's going to turn these a little bit. In fact, because it's, so this one in particular is quite tight, it may actually turn it in a way that I didn't intend it to be. And yeah, sure enough, see what happened? It just made it flat. And that's okay. So once I get it on, I'm gonna, gonna put it over as much as I can. Now actually what I'll do is I'll adjust it to where I kind of wanted it before. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna leave this up a bit because I will, I will jam, I will see if I can jam a rock in, so I'm taking a rock and I'm jamming it in the in the top here, just to see if I can stop it from uh, uh, swiveling back and closing. So I've put a, a rock in between the two the two wires because the the, the stocking is trying to squeeze them back. This it's so tight, and we kind of it's more. This is a temporary thing. Like I said, once it dries, these you won't have to worry about this it collapsing. What else can I do here? Oh, I see what I need to do. So I'm actually going to take out one, let's see how this works. My, the jaw of one of the faces got, it got, um, it, I wasn't careful enough. When I put it in, it was way, it was at this, on, together with the, the, the neck part, and I didn't give it a gap. So let me just take that out and actually put it in, put it back in. All right. As you can see, this is a bit of a struggle, and I, th in, I think, uh, so it, okay, after that big struggle, I ended up with something here. I'm not quite sure if I, plan I didn't plan it, but it turned out there. So that's how it turned out. Now, uh, I'm, I'm losing some of the jawline here. Do you guys see that? I kind of wish it would go in a bit. So maybe what I'll do is I'll actually... You see, I'm gonna. I want to actually. I'm gonna actually put a, a rock in here to bring it back, and then so once I have painted it, uh, then I can take this rock out. Okay, and this mouth is. I know what I need to do. I need to actually give it a little bit more stocking over here so that it goes. Do you see? I'm, I'm kind of bringing the stocking up so that it it does. It's not so tight over here, and it follows the. Uh, even for the nose, ah, you learn as you keep. So I'm putting, pulling the stocking back up, 
I'm giving it a lot of space here to keep it, um, to actually let it go inside the mouth there. And under the, see, I am going to put this rock here under the, the chin so that once, so that the, if I put the, if I were to put the paint on now, it would just dry with, without, and I would lose my jaw coming out there, my jawline. Okay, so we are, I think, ready. So as you can see, it's a bit of kind of a, um, a kind of sort of experimental, and at some point we'll find, oh, it, it, it works. The, the key is not to, uh, not to let the, those two um, profiles just be flat against each other. Make sure that some, in some way they are at opposing planes so that you get more of a three-dimensionality. Otherwise, it would just be a two-dimensional uh, uh, object and you want it to be three-dimensional. You want it to actually be, look like look sculptural. Okay, so here it is. This is now the last um, phase and sorry, it's a, this has been a long demonstration, but I, um, I hope it's been helpful. So with my, with your gesso or with, in this case, texture white, all I'm going to do is go in and this is the simplest part, is just paint it. Right? So you want just to get as much, and again, be a little bit careful because as you paint it, it's, it can slip. And so maybe hold it, see I'm holding it with my hand, keeping apart the two, the, the two faces. And I'm just going to cover every part of the, um, the, the nylon here. And it really doesn't matter, you know, what uh, your, your brush strokes look like because what's going to happen once this white uh, layer dries, then you're going to actually paint your two faces on here with colored acrylic, okay, with acrylic, co acrylic colors. So the key, though, is that you, you want to just make sure there's a thick enough layer that the holes get covered, the little tiny holes of your nylon get covered, okay? And uh, you may put one layer down and realize, oh, I have to add a little bit more. But um, um, you're not just painting, of course, the, 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 the top, the face part. You're also wanting to paint all the part that goes down. And here I cut it a little bit short. Do you see that I didn't, I didn't realize that I would need a little bit of extra in order to give, uh, let, let the mouth show? So when you, maybe you want to cut the whole, don't cut the leg in half, like cut it at, from the top. And then you can always trim it at the end. Uh, so you, can, you do want, ideally, the, the entire plastic to be covered with the nylon. In my case, I, I, you can still make do. So I'm going to cover this part of, of my sculpture with the paint. And I'm, but I'm going to go all the way to the bottom. And now you might see a little bit of a line of the edge, the, the, the end of that nylon. But that's okay. This doesn't, this doesn't um, in the end, it doesn't matter. So, as I've said, you want to paint from the top, right, straight down to the bottom of your sculpture. And you want everything covered with gesso. Right? Once that dries, you'll be ready to put your faces on. Right? As, and depending on how it turned out, you're going to, uh, oh, see, do you see how this slipped again? Depending on how it turned out, you can improvise on how you want to get those two faces. So this actually slipped. See, it's become really narrow again. So I, uh, even while I'm painting and I get my, I won't worry about getting my hands wet here. I'm going to keep adjusting it. Okay, so um, it's a bit of a uh, organic process, as we we say. It's a bit of a of, um, constantly adjusting. The main thing is once you've got all the paint on. Just make sure that it doesn't collapse flat again. And once it's it's not it's it's um, you've got it back into the the directions, the different planes that you had planned it out to be, then um, then let it dry. And as I said, once it dries, you don't have to have to worry about it slipping. It'll be really solid. I hope that is helpful. If you have any questions along the way, please contact me. And uh, if you don't have, uh, as I said, the nylon stocking then again, contact me and I'll talk you through how to do it with either the, 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 the bandage or um, the paper mache. Thanks, guys.